In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can show that a circle touches the x-axis. So let's start with the big ideas, the big theory that you're going to have to know to be able to do this sort of problem. So we're going to look at the general formula for a circle. And for any circle, you can write the general formula this way. There is another way to write the general formula, and I'll look at how you can solve problems with that format, but we'll focus on this one for now. So you should notice that when you are on the x-axis, that y is going to be zero. So you can see the x-axis here, and all the way along the x-axis, y is always zero. So what you can do is you can simplify this expression by putting zero for all of the y's. So replace all the y's with zeros, and it actually simplifies down to this. So you basically got this equation minus this term, and then this term is also gone. And so it simplifies down to this. This is, of course, a quadratic equation, and it is only in x. So we can compare this with our standard form for the quadratic equation that you may recognize from doing questions on the quadratic formula. And you can notice that you can compare each of these terms. You could find a by looking at what number is in front of x squared. You could find b by looking at the 2g term. And you could find c by looking at the constant term at the very end. And you're going to substitute this into a formula like this. This is b squared minus 4ac. And this is what we call the discriminant. And this tells you how many solutions there are. And we'll look at what that means in a second. So from this formula, you'll be able to determine if it touches the x-axis, if it touches at more than one point, or if it's just touching at one point, which would prove that it's only touching the x-axis at one place. So you've got three possible solutions. The first possibility is that it touches at one point. That's probably what you're trying to show in this problem. And this will happen when this b squared minus 4ac is exactly equal to zero. We could have another situation where b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero. And in this case, it's touching the x-axis at two points. So it's not like a little tangent kind of idea. It's actually intersecting at two points. The other possibility is where this expression comes out to be a negative number less than zero, and it doesn't touch the x-axis at all. So if you want to prove that it touches the x-axis, you probably want to show that it is this case that is occurring. So let's look at a worked example. Does a circle with radius of 5 and a center of minus 2, minus 1 touch the x-axis? So there is our general formula. So we can work out the center and the radius using this expression. So our center is minus 2, minus 1. And from that, we can see that we switch the sign. So we get G is 2, and you switch the sign there, and F will be 1. And then you can solve this equation using your values of g and f, which is just the opposite sign of each of these. And you could rearrange that to get a value of r. So what you can see is g is 2. That's just that switched around. f is 1. That's this number with the sign switched around. And then by substituting your g and your f into this equation, and we know that the radius is 5, so we'd substitute 5 in there. If you were to rearrange that, you can show that c equals minus 20. So we've got our three values that's required for this equation here. So we simply remind ourselves of this equation, and then we substitute in our values of g, f, and c. And when you substitute those values in, you end up with this equation. This is the equation that we're going to be working with. So if we look at the equation that we've just obtained when we found our f, our g, and our value of c, we can simplify this down by remembering that on the x-axis, y equals 0. So it simplifies down to this expression. We've got our nice quadratic. So we substitute that into our b squared minus 4ac formula. So we can see that a is, of course, 1. b is coming out as 4. And c is minus 20. So we've got b squared minus 4 times a times c. That gives us that expression. That is, of course, greater than zero. So in this case, the circle touches the x-axis at two points. So our circle is intersecting the x-axis. It's not just touching at one point. It's actually all the way through the x-axis. And you can tell exactly what situation you've got by interpreting this value. If we got it exactly zero, that would mean it was touching at one point. And if we got a negative number, then it wasn't touching the circle at all. We can also look at the alternative method. If we are given the formula for a circle in a different format, we can also work this out. So we could have a circle with a center of AB and a radius of R. And in that case, we're going to get this equation for the circle. 
So this is our other way of presenting the equation of a circle. And we are going to have it touch the x-axis, and that is touch at one point, if b is equal to r. So if we look at the geometry of that, we've got our circle here, we've got our center a, b, and if we put a line from the center down at the bottom, that's going to be length r, and it's going to touch at one point if b equals r. And then you can compare the number for b to r to tell if it's going to be not touching the x-axis or if it's going to be intersecting at two points. So this is how you can prove whether a circle touches the x-axis and how often it touches it in one, two, or zero places. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you. And finally, thank you very much for watching.